everyone, today we're out in my workshop again to celebrate the second YouTube anniversary of the Ars... Hello everyone, we're out in my workshop again to celebrate the second YouTube anniversary of the rcprinter.com YouTube channel. That's right, exactly two years ago, on February 9th, 2021, we posted our first YouTube video ever of the OpenRC F1 car, and we've been building 3D printed RC cars and filming them for your enjoyment ever since. Now, because it's our birthday, we have a special episode for you today. We're actually going to take a quick walk down memory lane and show you all the vehicles that we've built in the last 12 months. We're going to zip through each one of these. Just say a few quick words about each, what we liked, what we didn't like, if we added any modifications, and what maybe some improvements would be for the future. So without further ado, let's get to it! Okay, so the first 3D printed RC car we built last year was this guy right here, which is the 3D Sets Bamboo. Now the Bamboo series is a line of 1-8 scale RC trucks, and this Toyota FJ version is built on a very similar platform to the other models, such as the Rancher, which is modeled after a Jeep, and the Landy, which is modeled after a Land Rover. Now there are actually four different versions of the Bamboo available. This one right here, which is the hard top. There's another version without a top. There's a pickup truck version that has a wooden bed. And finally, there's a hardcore winch truck version that has a flat deck and a exterior roll cage. All versions of the Bamboo, Rancher, and Landly are four-wheel drive and can come with open or lock differentials in the front and rear of the vehicle. You can build them using a standard 540 brush motor with a geared transmission, or you can upgrade to the brushless C3530 motor and a belt-driven drivetrain, which is something we highly recommend. Now just like the real trucks, all these 3D sets ones have a solid axle suspension rather than an independent one, which isn't ideal for on-road handling, but should give you an advantage off-road. And it should make it better when crawling over obstacles or on bumpy terrain. Now all versions of these 3D sets trucks come with build plate size for a regular 220 millimeter square print bed, but they also have print plates available for smaller printers like the Prusa Mini. So your choice of 3D printer shouldn't hold you back from building one of these. Now my favorite part of building these 3D sets models is actually the detail that goes into them and the enjoyment that comes from actually building them. So for example, to build this bamboo, there are actually over 200 different 3D printed components that go into it. It requires about 600 different fasteners and 40 different bearings. So it's quite a project and if you decide to build one, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And if you're looking for a build kit to make your build just a little bit easier, make sure you check out our site because we do have them available at rcprinter.com. Now the next 3D printed RC car we built last year was this guy right here, which is the OpenZ V30 with a Ferrari F40 body by Guaro 3D. So this is the 30th version of a project to replicate a 128th scale Mini Z RC car. It uses a rear plate that's made out of TPU to get some flexing in the rear end, and it uses little springs up front for a front suspension as well. The body is simply held on with two little magnets, as you can see right there. And it's driven by a very inexpensive R130 motor and a 10 amp speed controller. It also uses eight tiny bearings in the wheels and in the rear differential. And yes, that's right, it does have a mini 3D printed rear differential. Now getting everything organized into this small package here takes a little bit of time, but after a few attempts and shortening some of your wires, you can definitely make it happen. Now this little beauty was printed with a standard FDM 3D printer with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So if you're under the impression that you need some special kind of resin printer in order to make something this small work, you definitely don't. And if you're looking for a nice finish on your body, this was just done with some simple spray paint and primer with some simple masking of the details and paintbrush to finish off some of the smaller details as well. Now in terms of performance, uh, it does use 3D printed tires and this really cheap motor here um, I think I got like 10 of them for $10 from China, so it doesn't perform super well, but if you upgraded the electronics in it and put some uh, decent rubber tires on it, it would go pretty fast. All right, so after building a couple of ski rides last year, we finally got the opportunity to build an Alpha 6 by Pascal Robert, who is the OG 3D printable RC snowmobile designer online. This is a 1-6 scale sled that's modeled after an Arctic Cat Alpha 1. So it does have a one-piece skid in the rear. It has some really cool features like a belt-driven transmission that has its own tensioner, a metal drive shaft, and it comes with a 3D printable guide so you can actually machine your own drive shaft, and Traxxas hex connection ball joints so everything moves nice and smoothly up front. The Alpha 6 also has a very cool snow cooling feature for the motor where the track can kick up some snow and cool the motor underneath. That is, as long as you're using a waterproof motor, which is required for this model. Another cool feature is that these steering knuckles here are made out of TPU, 
and they have a very long M3 screw screwed right through them, so that's gonna give them a lot of stability and longevity. So what all that results in is an RC snowmobile that is very reliable, but also a bit more complicated to build than your standard ski ride. If you're interested in building one of these, you can get the build files yourself from Pascal's website for about $45 which is more than worth it if this is something you're interested in. My biggest gripes with the sled were just these uh, front eight arms here are kind of narrow, so it's hard to find a good shock that fits inside them. And also the stance is a bit narrow, uh, causing the sled just to be a bit tippier than it could be if it was just made a little bit wider. Because like all RC snowmobiles, it's just not gonna turn that well without having a rider on top of it to be able to move its weight back and forth. And make sure you check out Pascal's YouTube channel where he shows off all his sleds and also has contests for people to build their own from time to time. Now in terms of RC snowmobiles, I actually have my next build all ready to go. That's this guy right here, which is the newly released Ski Ride version two. So we're gonna have a full build video of this guy up on our YouTube channel within the next little while. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when this guy comes around. All right, so the next build we did was actually from Dan Riley over at RC Test Flight. And one of our viewers sent me a message just letting me know that these kits were available. And once I saw that, I immediately fell in love with it and got my order in for batch number two. So this is a big tracked RC vehicle that's about 22 inches long and 20 inches wide. And it's modeled after the base of a snowcat. And I think Daniel just wanted something that could move around really well in the snow and carry his FPV gear so he could do some exploring in the winter time. Now the original model of the snowcat was actually fully 3D printed and you can actually find it on Thingiverse if you want to print it yourself. But Daniel went through many, many iterations of the vehicle and the 3D printed tracks just would never hold up. So we wanted to get a set of injection molded ones. However, they're very, very expensive to do and you have to do a large run. So he actually decided he'd release a full kit so people could build their own and he could do a large run of these injection molded plastic tracks. Now, unfortunately, I don't think you can still buy a full RCTF snowcat kit, but there are smaller kits available that do include these injection molded tracks. So you can recreate this yourself if you'd like. Now the kit comes with these injection molded plastic tracks here, so you don't have to print those yourself. But all the yellow pieces on the interior and the uh, drive wheels and TPU guide wheels all need to be 3D printed. It also comes with this polycarbonate shell, metal axles, and all the electronics you need to make it go. The only real issue I had with it was the ESCs that the kit originally came with weren't that great, so we upgraded those. And otherwise, I really couldn't be happier with the result. It's super beefy, it runs real well, it can take a licking and keep on ticking. This is definitely one of my favorite RC projects that we've done so far. For a tank, it actually goes pretty fast and it can actually run upside down if I strap some batteries to the top here. But I also have the option of building a body if I'd like for the top. And I may do that at some point. I was actually hoping to actually house some FPV equipment in there and go driving up a mountain, just like Dan does in his videos. But that's all new tech to me, so we'll just have to take it one step at a time. There's lots more to come on our 3D printed RCTF Snowcat. All right, so our next build was our first foray into 3D printed planes with this guy right here, which is the Eclipse and Model T. As you might expect, results of this experiment have been a little bit mixed as we've crashed it more than once. And I think this is about the version four that we've built. Now, originally I actually printed this out of lightweight PLA, uh, which is great because it's very lightweight, but that does make it a bit hard to print and also very slow to print. So in future versions, I've actually reprinted this in PLA. Uh, I tried PETG as well, but it seemed to warp too much. My favorite part about printing this in PLA instead of lightweight PLA is that you can put many, many pieces on a build plate instead of printing them all one at a time, which saves you forever when you're printing it over and over and over again. However, I do realize that with lightweight PLA, you're gonna get a plane that flies a lot better in the end. Also, lightweight PLA does not hold up well in a crash, and I've been crashing a lot. This particular plane seems to fly pretty well for a minute or two, and then it starts to do loop-de-loops, and I can't get it under control, and now I'm a terrible pilot, so that's probably part of it, but I think there's also something happening with the center of gravity where weight's maybe shifting backwards and causing that to happen. Either that or I'm just flying too slow for the weight and I need to up the speed a bit. Now I do have plans to print more planes this year, so please stick around if this is something you're interested in. And we also have power packs available for the Eclipse and 3D printed planes on our website at rcprinter.com if you'd like to try building one yourself. All right, so our next build is this 3D printed car hauler trailer from 3D Sets. This four wheel trailer does include its own suspension and loading ramps and it has an adjustable height connector for any of the 3D sets trucks. For this particular trailer, I chose to do the wooden deck and I printed it out of wood PLA, which is something I've never used before. And it looks really good with a coat of clear on top. The car hauler comes with a little toolbox up front here. And it's great for playing around and towing some of your other RC vehicles. It's kind of rare to find one this big. So this was definitely a cool build. 
All right, so next it was the middle of summer last year and we were spending a lot of time on the water. So I wanted to 3D print some boats. So we ended up printing these three right here. Now all these models that you see here were 3D printed out of PLA. They were glued together with CA glue and activator and then they were primed and painted. And I've had zero issues with water leaking into the hull from any of them. So I think it's pretty safe to say that as long as you glue them tightly together, everything fits well and you give them a coat of paint on top, you're going to be good to go. First we have this RC jet boat by designer Bash Tech. This boat has a 3D printed impeller in here and a 3D printed jet drive sticking out the back. It uses a homemade four millimeter drive shaft with some four millimeter inside dimension bearings. Currently I'm running a D3542 outrunner motor in there with no water cooling. And that's one of the issues I've had with this is that it does require water cooling pretty much no matter what motor I seem to put in it. So I think next year I'll probably switch to a 540 inrunner motor and a water jacket on the outside of that. This guy runs really great. He's super fast and fun to drive. You don't have to worry about the prop catching on anything because there's no prop sticking out the bottom. And it turns super quick, turns on a dime. Now the second boat we made was this 34 inch long hull by Sergi2484 off Thingiverse. So now this was a really fun build that also works really well. As you can see, it uses 3D printed fin stabilizers on the back, a 3D printed rudder with uh, holes in it for water cooling the motor in ESC. And then it uses a metal drive shaft that runs right through here. And then it's connected at the end here with an off the shelf plastic propeller. Now inside we're just running a 540 motor and it seems to push it pretty well, but I think I would like to upgrade a little bit. So I'll probably put some more power in there next year. Last but not least, we have the Foss Catamaran by Printfully 3D. You can see here it uses a flexible metal drive shaft as well as a metal rudder with water cooling in it. And this design was actually purchased from the guys at Printfully 3D. Now there's a lot of different catamarans you can find on Thingiverse and other free sites. Uh, the reason I went for this one is being my first catamaran and still kind of a new to boats, I wanted something that had all the instructions I needed to make it work. And it was definitely worth the 14 euros I paid to get all the instructions. Now inside here we have some cool features like these battery straps that are molded right into the hull. The locking top screws right down and also has waterproofing around it. Now the one big drawback I would say though is that it is a bit of a heavy build and it takes a lot of power to move this thing. Inside here I think we have a 550 motor. So what I might do next year is actually pull this motor out and put it in this guy and then get a bigger motor for this one in the end. All in all I'd say we had a pretty spectacular year 3D printing RC boats. One of the nice things is that you're not smashing them all the time so you don't have to constantly fix them. And if you spend a lot of time on the water like we do, they're certainly fun to have around. So the next thing we built was another MK Ultra. We built this one specifically so that we could do a build video to show everyone else how to do it because there are some complicated features, um, especially in these front spindles and in the drivetrain. So figuring out how to put it together can be a bit of a chore. Hopefully that video helps. The orange one back there is the one we did last year and because we showed it last year I'm not going to spend any more time on this guy right now. I just wanted to bring it out and say that the MK Ultra is still the best performing 3D printable RC vehicle that we've been able to make to date. So if you're looking for a really awesome 3D printable RC all wheel drive buggy, you definitely can't go wrong with an MK Ultra and we have build kits for this guy available on our website at rcprinter.com as well. Now the next RC vehicle we built is this one, which is the Roback 2. The Roback is a four wheel drive RC truck with a super simple cover that has huge five inch tires and an all metal drivetrain from HSP Racing. Now because of the all metal drivetrain, it is a bit more expensive to build one of these guys than something like the MK Ultra. But obviously the benefit is that it's much more rugged and you can run much bigger tires on it without worrying about destroying your car. Now as the name Roback 2 denotes, this is the second version of the Roback vehicle. And I think it performs really great and I hope to spend a whole lot more time this year playing around with my Roback 2 and trying it out on all kinds of different terrains. So far we've only been able to try it on my icy driveway and in a little bit of snow, but I hope to get it out in the dirt and the sand and on the grass next year and see how it does on those surfaces. We are getting build kits in stock for the Roback 2 very soon, so keep your eyes out on rcprinter.com. The next car we did was this one, which is the Veltro, which is a touring car by designer Tahusevet, also known as Grumpy Modeler on YouTube. And he's the same designer that designed the MK Ultras, as well as the Ursa that you may remember we built last year, and also the Badger front wheel drive RC that's supposed to be the easiest to build of all of them. Now this designer also spends a ton of time designing 3D printable RC planes and flying them. 
So definitely check out his YouTube channel if that's something that's up your alley. The Veltro Touring Car chassis is based on the MK Ultra, just scaled down a little bit. It's a little less wide, a little less long, a little less tall. And then you can add your own body or you can purchase one of his 3D printable body designs like this one. That's just a $5 add-on. This one here is the Toyota MR2, but it also comes with that Lancia Delta if that's more your style. So just like the MK Ultra, this is a belt driven car that has the option of using 3D printed differentials in the front and rear or upgrading to the FS metal diffs, which is something I'd highly recommend. And personally, I just really love the look of this car, which was just painted with uh, some green rattle can spray paint. And these decals were just printed out on my home inkjet printer, including uh, the carbon fiber hood. All right, so the next build we did is this one, which is the Dodge Challenger by designer Duke Docks. He's definitely one of my favorite 3D printed designers in general. I believe this is the first complete RC car that he's actually published. And he makes really great YouTube videos as well if you want to check him out. The chassis for this car is available freely online. And if you want to add this beautiful Dodge Challenger body, you can buy the files for just $7.50. Now, if you built a few 3D printable RC cars like I have, when you build this one, you can tell it was definitely modeled after the OpenRC F1 car. However, he upgraded it quite a bit by increasing the scale, adding some herringbone gears in the back, and adding a TPU suspension in the front and the rear. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same, just a bit bigger. Which is great because he kept the simplicity of it, meaning that it's accessible for anyone to build. Now, one of my favorite features is the addition of an optional Tamiya light kit, which I've never used before, but it allows you to be able to have turn signals, uh, the accelerator turns on an extra light in the front and there's brake lights in the rear as well. This was a super fun project that I would recommend to anyone to build. And if you look on YouTube, you can actually find tons of videos of people building this one online. All right, next we have this guy, which is the Caramel CRC, uh, done by the friendly folks over at Printed Nest. So the futuristic bionic body is what kind of drew me to want to build this car in the first place. And it was a very interesting build just because it is designed so much differently than every RC car I've ever built. The body uses little shells with M2 screws in between each of the pieces and then there's filament that runs through these longer sections that helps to hold it together. It has a TPU suspension in the front and the rear. TPU bumpers front and back. It uses TPU tires and a belt drive in the back too that you can 3D print. So there really aren't a whole lot of non-3D printed pieces you need to buy to make this thing go. And that means you can build it pretty inexpensively once you get the build files from them, which are just $19. Now at the end of the day, this car is not all that fast. It's not gonna win you any races. But if you want a car that's just built different and looks really cool and is a bit of a showpiece, then the Caramel CRC might be the car for you. All right, finally the wait is over. The Tarmo 5 has arrived. 3D designer Chris from Engineering Nonsense has released a all new version of the Tarmo series and it uses zero of the same 3D printed parts from the old version. This is a rear wheel drive truck with a lock differential, whereas the previous version, the Tarmo 4, was a four wheel drive car with an open front differential. Now, just like the previous cars in the Tarmo series, it uses really beefy parts and a D3542 outrunner motor to drive the model, which gives it a ton of power. Now, I do like four wheel drive vehicles, but because of the simpler drivetrain, we can actually run much larger tires on the Tarmo 5 than we were able to on the Tarmo 4. And that kind of makes up for it a bit, but also it's it's going to be way, way more reliable than the predecessor. Some of the cool new features that were added include these TPU torque tamper drive shafts, 3D printed CV joints, top and bottom. There's no body, unfortunately, just like the Tarmo 4, but it does have this really cool space in here for you to put your batteries in. Just overall, it's a very unique design. There's long three millimeter rods that run right through the vehicle, giving it added stability. And there's TPU plates in between all the chassis pieces. And those are used as the connection points for your A-arms, and that's gonna give those connection points a lot more durability. It's also got a nice big TPU bumper here for good measure. Overall, this is a super fun car that still drives really fast and is gonna perform really well, but it's gonna be a lot more reliable than the previous version. We do have build kits available already for the Tarmo 5 on our website at rcprinter.com, so make sure you check those out if you wanna build one of these, because it's gonna save you a lot of money if you don't try and source all those individual fasteners and metal parts yourself. And that's it, that's what we've been up to over the last 12 months. I really look forward to playing around with you guys through the rest of 2023 and into 2024. We're actually almost done building our next model right here, which as you can see is massive. So let me know down in the comments if you think you know what this next one is. Before I sign off here, I just want to say a quick thank you to all the designers who designed all these wonderful RC projects behind me. Each one has its own very unique features and build challenges. And it's the learning every day while I build all of these that really makes RC Printer exciting. So thank you so much for providing these models. I definitely couldn't do it without you. Also, thanks to all 
of you for watching and subscribing, pushing us now to almost 4,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. It's just really mind blowing to me that 4,000 people would actually sign up to hear me talk, so thank you very much for that. And thanks to everyone who commented with suggestions or helpful hints or things I should try and new models to build. It really does make this a whole lot more fun engaging with all of you. So let me sign off again by saying, if you're looking for cool ideas to 3D printed RC projects like these ones to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, make sure you check us out at rcprinter.com. Happy printing!